Hello, my dear gardening friends. Doesn't it look like a beautiful fairy tale? We are having our first snow, big, wonderful snow of the season. My kids are ecstatic. Oh, I love it. It's beautiful today. All the snow and the branches look so magical. But there are things which need to be done in the garden. And in this video, we are going to walk around and look what we can do in winter during big snows. Snow is such a great insulator for our gardens. So if the beginner gardeners are afraid that snow can be harmful, the answer is no. Snow is a wonderful thing in our gardens. Well, first of all, oh my hair got stuck on this. First of all, snow, when it falls on the ground, it really protects our garden from wind, from strong uh, freezing conditions, from all sorts of harsh elements. It's like a cute little blanket which covers our plants and lets them live through the winter in nice and toasty conditions. So, but there are several things we need to do in the garden. Come follow me and uh, I will show you. I have several plants which I need to protect against the snow and one of them is one of those plants are abovitis. Abovitis are growing in two parts of my garden and here they are. Since I'm training one, this abovite here with one leader, it can withstand the snow damage much easier. You can see here, right? This abovite. This, uh, this uh, spring I went ahead, it had uh, different competing leaders, you see this side, and I uh, cut these leaders, I trimmed them. Trimming should be done in spring when abovites are actively growing, because I want this abovite to be nice and tall. And as you can see, one leader is taking on, and this abovite is nice and uh, very upward looking. So abovites can get damaged by snow. So what we want to do, we want to make sure that after big snow, nothing stays on. We don't have to do a very serious job, but I think abovites look so nice when they have this nice green presence in, uh, uh, in the white blanket of winter. Now here I have these abovites and they don't have very strong main leader. And since they are in shade, oh gosh, everything is so beautiful. Since they are in shade, they have, they, they are kind of uh, heavy in the center. They don't have that nice, beautiful, strong, thin top. So I make sure that I uh, don't let snow accumulate. Right now it looks the snow just fell in the morning and it's very, oh gosh. And it's very light, but later, if we have freezing conditions, all this beautiful fluffy snow can turn into a freezing, heavy, limp-breaking oh, thing. And I don't want that to happen, especially to my beautiful abovitis. All right, so this is done. Now look at my boxwoods. Boxwoods are like sturdy warriors in winter. They withstand snow, but still I give them a nice rub because I don't want the snow again to turn into ice in case we have uh, rain later. So my boxwoods get a little shake too. Not much, a little bit. Now these boxwoods, look at them. They are all covered. Ah, beautiful. No, 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 no. Nice. La, 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 la. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ding, ding, ding. All right, good. So, you know how they call snow? Snow is called old man's poor, not old man's, poor man's fertilizer. Because when snowflakes fall, uh, fall through the air, through the atmosphere to the ground, nitrogen attaches to snowflakes. And 
falls to the ground with the snow. And when the snow starts for, uh, start uh, uh, melting, that nitrogen seeps through the ground and provides our plants with natural fertilizer. They say that uh, snow has the most of natural fertilizer. The amount of natural fertilizer can be found in snow the most. So snow is excellent for our gardens. Another thing, look at this. Just a good suggestion, if you have a lot of happy feet running in your garden, as my garden is, just look at all the little passages here my kids made, and I'm sure at the end of the day all this area would be covered with nice happy ah, feet prints. So I know that, and ahead of time I made happy sticks here, just in case we have a lot of snow and every area will be covered. So if you have a lot of snow and you kind of run the risk that all your beautiful perennials are covered with snow and sometimes you can just run through them, make sure you have sticks which are telling you, hello, you cannot step on me because I'm small and very valuable to your mother. So that's point number two about your gardens. All right, just look at our beautiful holly. When we moved into this house 10 years ago, this holly was a fairly small tree. And look how beautiful and majestic it became for these 10 years. But here near this holly, we have a yew uh, bush growing. And that yew is growing on its own. It means it has a lot of loose limbs. So if you have plants in your garden which might snap, like this, you do yourself a favor, shake it off. Oh, he's our neighbor's dog. He's a cute dog. Hi, Bowie. Oh, Bowie, it's okay. All right, and I will go on another side and shake it off too. My azalea is okay. Azalea has very stiff. Ooh. Ooh! Azalea has a very stiff branches, so azalea would be okay. Come with me to the front. <laughs> Come with me to the front. You know what? When we started our front uh, uh, flower border here, and for you, for those of you who don't know, this was all grass, the, you know, the strip line between the road and our sidewalk. It's a territory of town. So we decided to convert it into flower border and we planted beautiful hydrangeas here. And you know what, there was some sort of concern that when big plow trucks will go through the street and they're plowing all the snow onto, onto, you know, onto the side, our hydrangeas are going to suffer. And even our neighbor, one of our good neighbors commented on it that that can damage our hydrangea or even take them all down, break all the limbs. But look, these hydrangeas, the row of hydrangeas are surviving through that yearly plow. Sometimes we have heavy snow through the winter. And in case you decide and you are on a, you know, you really don't know, this is an example that hydrangeas are surviving and they are thriving here near the road. Now, these boxwoods, they do have a tendency to flop with snow too. So I'm going to give them also a shake. Now, you know what? A lot of people who live in New England, where I live, and New England can have big, deep freezing conditions in winter. And you know what? I'm very thankful that those conditions exist because just think about it. When temperature goes all the way down to zero Fahrenheit, all the mildew spores are killed outside. So thanks to our cold winters, and sometimes people don't want to shovel and deal with snow, but thanks to those low temperatures, a lot of parasites, a lot of mosquito eggs, uh, a lot of spores of harmful things are killed. And as a result in Northeast, for roses, 
I, for example, me, I never have issues with mildew in the garden. We do have black spot. That's the thing to deal with roses here. But mildew is probably killed and never comes back in spring because we have such wonderful winters, which are unfortunately becoming less and less now. But snail, several good snows are good. And I am really, oh, look at this. Uh, and little icicles already forming. So I suspect this snow is not going to last a long time. Oh, all right. Again, the quicker you get to the snow, the better it will be while it's still young and easy to shake off. Ooh. And you know what? After this good workout outside, a great cup of coffee near the beautiful snowy window. Tastes really good. And maybe a good catalog about roses or a good book to read. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe. If you like my adventures in my garden, happy gardening and I will see you next time.